what's going on guys pete here with mixbetternow.com coming to you with the brand new mix critique monday uh it is monday may the 15th 2017 just want to say happy mother's day to all the moms uh for yesterday you know gotta gotta give props to your mama so uh anyway uh welcome to a new week all right we got four mixes on deck as always this week we have mixes from stuart wallace Michael Brown, Cameron Harris, and Doug Payne. Uh, really stoked. These are four really good, uh, really good tunes. I took a little peek uh, before I dragged them in, and uh, nice little variety. Kind of have a country tune, um, kind of like an indie rock song, um, uh, almost like an R and B song, and then we have like a, a really cool hard rock song. So nice variety going on this week and uh, uh for those of you who are new to mix critique monday i just want to say welcome uh what mix critique monday is is it is a platform for you to get a free mix critique okay uh basically uh, all you have to do if you would like to uh get one or be on here is email me pete at mixbetternow.com and uh please email me a downloadable wave file of your mix uh but with that please include your name uh, the name of the song slash mix, the name of the band or artist, if it is different from yours and it is first come first serve. Uh, please try and get me a WAV file. Don't really like doing MP3s for these. Uh, and that's really it. Okay. Everything that I say on here is all constructive criticism. It's all positive. There's nothing negative. Uh, uh, you know, if, if I critique a song, it is with your best intentions uh, in mind. I don't say anything maliciously. Uh, as I say every week, it's all love here. And uh, I try and make it as positive as I can because I don't have any time for negativity in my life. So, uh, you know, and everybody's usually really good about being positive and encouraging to every uh, everyone else. So uh, I like to definitely Definitely keep it in that realm. Um, so, you know, nothing to be worried about. We don't pick on anybody. And uh, anything that I say, like I said, anything that I say, like I said, wow. <sighs> I've been shooting these on Sundays, uh, Sunday evenings now. Last week I did Sunday evening and it's Sunday, Sunday now. It's not really Monday, but uh, <laughs> I'm finding that it's like later in the day and I'm just like, woo. Anyway, so, uh, um, you could tell by my super eloquent uh, uh, use of grammar that uh, that it's so good. But um, but anyway, it, I can get them up earlier in the day on a Monday if I do it this way. So, um, you know, it works better. Anyway, uh, let's just get into it. Enough of my uh, jibber jabbering. And uh, the first one we have going on here is a song called It Was My Fault uh, for Waiting by the band um, uh Atlantis Bound, okay? And this one is mixed by Stuart Wallace. So without further ado, let's just jump in. Here we go. really dig it so far everything sounds cool love the um the vocal sounds great uh just something that i'm kind of hearing is that it, it to me it sounds very very buried um uh in the mix it sounds kind of pushed back uh with a little bit of that slap that i'm hearing on there some of that slap delay or shorter delay um you know i would love to hear that a little bit more forward because for me it sounds like the music is here and the vocals back it's usually the opposite that i i kind of get a lot and uh let me just push it back here a little bit. Another heartbreak. And I know you couldn't tell the truth to. So, uh, 
the way that I would sort of remedy kind of getting everything to line up a little bit would be to um, put a little bit more of the dry vocal in and take a little bit, uh, uh, a little of the uh, the wet vocal out. It, it, just in terms of a balance. So if you're sending um, the vocal to ascend and a return, I would just maybe push that down a little bit. Or if you have it as an insert, I would just push a little more dry into it. Um, the flip side could be uh, you could compress it a little bit more, which would which would bring it forward uh, in the mix. Uh, and if none of those things work, you could always just see if it's a volume issue, uh, issue and just kind of bring it uh, bring it to the foreground a little bit because the vocal sounds awesome. Like tonally, EQ wise, everything sounds really good. It was recorded really well, and I want to I kind of want to be able to to sort of hear that a little bit more with the rest of the band. You know, I, I personally. Um, Vocals that kind of come to the foreground can sometimes be okay if you want that really intimate thing But when they get pushed back so far uh, It can get just a little bit lost unless that's exactly how you want it then completely disregard everything I'm saying um, But you know, I think it's all about balance like that's you know Everything about mixing is 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 balance is getting things to play nice with each other so uh, I just think it would have a better impact on uh, on the tune uh, Let's keep going here. I'm just hearing a little bit of um uh, it just sounds a little under compressed to me, uh, which is good. Uh, I'd rather see things under compressed than, you know, kind of waveforms that look like bricks going across here. But let me just make sure I'm hearing that right. <laughs> All right, so check this out, right? I always like to kind of to kind of tweak with the uh, uh, with the master bus here, just to see how things sound. Sort of playing the role of the mastering engineer, as if let's say you guys sent me this mix and you were like, "Hey, uh, you know, this is what I have," um, and I was gonna try and make things sound better. Um, I feel like the compressing this is really uh, is adding some some size to the overall mix, some intensity, and some sustain. So check this out. When this comes in here, I know you will and and the more I hear the compression on here, I definitely think compressing that lead vocal a little bit would uh, would bring that a little more forward sitting with the band. But when this comes in, uh, I'm really hearing it on the drums, where the drums just are sort of sustaining in a really nice way, and it's uh, everything's kind of contained. Um, and, and as a result, it sounds a little bit bigger, um, even though we're putting a ceiling and a floor on the audio. <laughs> Cool. So I'm definitely liking what the SSL is doing. Um, you know, I, I use a variety of different mix bus compressors, uh, depending on what the song calls for. Sometimes, you know, I love the SSL uh, G bus. I love the API 2500. Uh, I love the Neve 33609. It really just depends on the program material. But what I'm doing here is I, I'm using an attack of 10 milliseconds, 
release of 100, uh, two to one ratio, and I'm just knocking off one to two dB. And I love what it's doing to the overall uh, cohesion of this mix. I'm adding sustain to the drums, and everything is sounding tighter and more glued. So, um, I would say definitely throw a little bit more compression on whatever you got going on in your mix bus, uh, Stuart. Um, you could certainly add a little bit more. Um, I know some guys like to use a, a, a one and a half to one ratio, or you know they'll use a, a, a 30 millisecond attack, and all of that is just program dependent. It just depends on how it sounds on your mix. Um, I don't have any like set things that I like to do, except I like to use a faster release time and a lower ratio, but. You know, I wouldn't use a 10 to 1 on my mix bus, for example. But anyway, I like what that's doing. Um, You know, what that's sort of making me hear is that the drums uh, uh, could definitely uh, do with quite a bit of parallel compression. The drums, to me, sound a little thin. And, you know, in a song like this, you kind of want the drums to bang a little bit. Um, I like the fact that, that they're not drenched in samples. You know, you can definitely tell that they are the drums that were recorded, which is cool. And, uh, and props for that. And, and you know, I, I always advocate trying to use those because if you go through the trouble of recording it, that's probably the drum sound that you want. So, uh, you know, try and stay with it if you can. But, uh, but I think by using parallel compression on the drums, uh, if you haven't, would really enhance uh, the size of the snare, the sustain of the snare, uh, the same thing with the kick, and of course with the toms. Um, you know the the overheads. That's a that's a thin line to walk with with parallel compression. But make sure you're compressing on the drum bus a little bit, and then just run it out in parallel. Um, and I think that would sound really awesome. The only other thing that I'm hearing here is that I feel like the bass could just come down a pinch um, dB wise. But uh, let's keep going here. And I All right, so this guitar part right here is just it's sounding the the guitar is a little a little muddied and a little bit muffled um it's also it's kind of in a weird spot too for me it, it I, it's not straight up the middle it's not over to the left it's kind of hanging out in that in-between zone so um you know just sort of listen for some some muddier frequencies on there and uh, do a little subtractive eq uh, i think that would um you know, I'm not insinuating lose any size on the body of the guitar, but just kind of look for any of those, um, you know, those nasally frequencies that can often happen. Sounds like it's an amp sim to me, and amp sims are notorious for implementing uh, unpleasant artifacts and uh, EQ frequencies. You know, so like if you're dialing a dialing in a um, I don't know, uh, a Marshall or, you know, then you, you, you go over to a, a, a Fender and the Fender sounds really scooped and then you go to a Vox and the Vox is very mid forward. Um, you know, they're trying to basically emulate the, the sound of these amps and uh, you can know, often get these muddy frequencies creep into your, um, you know, your guitar parts there. Uh, and I think you could come down a little bit too. Uh, so I'd bring it down, uh, Try and scoop out a little of the uh, little bit of the mud, little bit of the nasal. Cool. 
really, really solid job, Stuart. Um, solid mix. Just a couple things. Go back, check out what I said. Um, you know, the other thing, too, is that towards the end there, listen to the drums here. You will lead to my demise, but I just ignore all I'm kind of losing the drums a little bit, right? They're kind of getting buried. Uh, so you can automate them a little bit louder. The flip side is if you put that parallel compression on, like I was talking about, that's going to really give them uh, quite a bit of size, uh, in, you know, in the context of the mix there. Um, the rhythm guitars that are sort of panned out left and right, I I'd love to hear a little bit more rhythm guitar because up the middle, I'm hearing vocal, I'm hearing bass, I'm hearing the drums, but I feel like the, the rhythm guitars are just getting a little bit lost there. So, uh, you know, a little bit of volume, um, it, you know, it's hard to say EQ wise what's happening with them, but just a little bit of volume would bring them up. It would fill out, uh, sort of the sonic landscape of that. So I would love to hear it, but, uh, but anyway, great job. That was, uh, it was my fault for waiting, uh, by Atlantis bound mixed by Stuart Wallace. So Stuart appreciate it. Really, really solid job, man. All right. So next up is jealous by connect mixed by Michael Brown. Here we go. I'm jealous of the rain that falls upon your skin. It's closer than my hands have been. I'm jealous of the rain I'm jealous of the wind That ripples through your clothes It's closer than your shadow I'm jealous of the wind I wish you the best of all this world could give. Man, I love the lyrics. So clever. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a big lyric guy, so I got to give credit where credit's due. Really, really great. And uh, man, the, the lead vocal sounds awesome. So good. Really, really kind of sucks me in and makes me want to listen more. Um, you know, and uh, she recorded really, really well, mixed really well. So, uh, sounds great so far. And I told you when you left me, there's nothing to forgive. But I always thought you'd come back and tell me, are you fine? Break and misery. It's hard for me to say I'm jealous of the way you're happy without me. I'm jealous of the night that I don't spend with you. crazy but it sounds like the um like the drums and the and the bass is actually like a like a beatbox it's a like a human vocal uh sound sounds killer though i um let me know michael because uh you know especially the the snare um you know i can sort of hear some of the um you know the psh kind of thing going on but it's, it sounds awesome i want to keep listening here and I told you
right, so this part's getting us a little bit loud. Um, I, but I love it though. Uh, it sounds to me like you're kind of automating this. This uh, I, I'm guessing just based lo uh, uh, looking at the waveform where it is, and that it's you know the amplitude is uh, at the highest point. It's probably the last chorus, uh, which is great. And and I know you guys have all heard me saying here before that I like to automate. Uh, you know, my chorus is to build and build and go back down and sort of kind of go on this compositional, um, you know, journey. Uh, but it's just a little kind of kind of loud, like to the point where like if I was in my car, it might just be a little loud and I turn down the volume knob. Um, you know, that's just a taste thing. If you liked where that's going, cool. Uh, but I'm not hearing anything that's like really problematic. Um, like I said, the lead vocal sounds amazing. Uh, the I like how the, the the female vocals are sort of out wide. There's a couple points that the female vocals get a little loud, and um, I don't know. It's not like they're conflicting really with the with the lead vocal up the middle, but but I could just use like a little less of that. The other thing I was trying to is um, I just threw a little bit more, a little bit of compression on here, and I kind of was digging the way that it glued this all together a little bit. Cause all I do is cry. so sick really cool tune um definitely a different uh a different type of tune that that you know we usually get on here but uh man we love we love all kinds of stuff so i know i do um that was jealous by connect mixed by michael brown i thought that was so good and and what's even cooler about that for me is that it sounded like the majority of the stuff happening was all was just vocals into a mic or man i would love to know what's up with that michael because um that's sort of what it sounded like but but what was great is that everything sounded really good uh was very clear and articulate and um you know there wasn't anything that was sticking out to me that was extremely uh uh you know sort of that needed direct attention um the only thing was in that last chorus it got a little overly loud for me the only other thing that i would say is that you can maybe thin out the um the 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 backing vocals a little bit uh i love where the lead vocal the male vocal sitting in the middle but the vocals on the sides were just getting a little kind of like a little a, i don't want to say muddy because they weren't muddy but they were just very full sounding so if you thin those out a little bit um wherever they're at what i would do is just take a low shelf and i would just you know go to like 150 or 200 probably 200 since it's female and i would just do like a 3db cut uh, with a low shelf that way you're just sort of kind of muting a lot of that stuff you'll clear it out it'll sound uh, a lot more pronounced getting all that stuff out of the way so really really good job super super cool tune and a really really good mix very cool all right next up we have morning sun by a wayward soul and this one's kind of like a country tune so let's just uh let's jump into this one let me get my mix tool up and here we go well, if i'm gone Son, won't you believe that I have left this world behind in peace? I won't need another smoke. Drinking it won't much float my boat. I'll be just fine to leave them at my feet. If you say, if you say that you wanted me to stay. I 
Great song. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, Overall, uh, you know, solid, uh, solid mix so far. Just a couple things that I'm hearing is it sounds the overall mix sounds a little thin, thinned out to me. Um, just a little, uh, a little on the anemic side. And I'm guessing that that has to do with, uh, with maybe some filtering or via some subtractive uh, EQs on, on some tracks, um, you know, as you're going through this and mixing. Um, you know, it just, I, I would love to hear it a little bit warmer. And that's not something that I say quite frequently. Um, you know, a lot of the times there'll be stuff where I feel like there'll be a lot of uh, muddy buildup uh, that can occur, you know, throughout mixes or some stuff that just sort of needs some, uh, some sculpting, some subtractive EQ on the bottom. And with this, I almost am left wanting some more low end and left wanting some more mids. Um, but let's keep listening here and uh, see what we got. Took the road. I guess it's because the trail went cold I have left some friends behind I'm sure they're doing fine Out there on their own, away from home If you say that you wanted me to stay a weird phasey thing going on with the vocals kind of hanging out um because the first the first male vocalist that comes in is sort of here the second one is like here so it's not left and it's not really quite up the middle and the female is kind of like over here so i feel like there's this weird phase thing happening like i sort of hear these um uh, just a little bit of fit, you know, and that could that could really explain why I'm wanting to hear some more low end and body in this is there might be some phase cancellation somewhere in here um, that's sort of thinning everything out. You know, it could just be that there is. Um, it's impossible for me to really know if there's if you've got some phase issues going on without really seeing your session and what you know what how, how everything was recorded and how everything was treated but um you know it's it, it doesn't sound harsh on the top end like where some 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 bright stuff is kind of you know can can actually be uncomfortable to listen to but i'm just missing some body even the bass to me is very it's a focused bass sound so um you know, it's, it's, it's still, it's holding down the low end, but I'm not getting all of that. Um, you know, that, that, that stuff below 200 that I would say is, you know, fundamental and, and important, you know, the 60, the hundred, uh, you know, some of those areas that I would, you know, maybe even like on a, on a stereo bus, sometimes I'll add a little 60 with a pull tech and I'll maybe add a little 10 or a little, uh, 16 on top, get a little smiley face thing going on, but I just kind of want to hear some more, some more, just girth and heft in the bottom. Um, immediately, something that I would, I would think of to to sort of combat that would be to, um, put something like tape on there, just like a darker tape sound. So, I'm trying to think what the darkest tape plugin I have is, because like for me, EQ isn't really gonna. I don't know if that would really help it by boosting. Try, 
So the base fundamental is probably right around 60, but that's about as low as it gets, as you can see over here. So all this stuff in here, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of like wanting to hear a little bit more of that. Let me see if I can just add a little bit of weight to this. See, the problem is when I'm bringing a little 100 up in here, it's sort of, it's it's increasing the volume of the bass, and then that's sort of getting out of balance with everything else, so that's not really quite as simple as, as doing that. Um, if I put a low shelf up in here, uh, I don't know what that would do. Yeah, just by boosting low end, all I'm hearing is more bass. So I'm not really hearing low end on the kick. I'm not really hearing uh, the body and the weight of the vocals or the guitars. Everything is just a little anemic. And, um, you know, uh, um, my guess is that you might be high passing, uh, using a lot of high pass filters a little aggressively in your mix, uh, or you're cutting out quite a bit of low end stuff and uh, really getting it to sound you know on the brighter side and you know that's listen that's not that's not a terrible thing um but just be aware that that's kind of what i'm hearing the other thing i just want to check out real quick is i want to see if like a tape little tape does anything to add some some fur to the overall let's grab the oxide because there's a yeah this one right here maybe like a seven and a half ips might even warm this up a bit All right, so check this out, right? Like, I'm not really trying to, to, to make it sound more lo-fi, but if you uh, run a 7.5 uh, IPS tape setting on here, I feel like we're getting a little bit more of that body back on here. Because when I bring it back up to the 15 IPS, you can really hear that bass bump come back in. Even though I'm lost, but on my way. Right on. Well, I just want to say that I love anything with the pedal steel in it. So I'm a big pedal steel fan. Lap steel, good, good stuff. Um, so everything was was okay. It was just like I said, overall a little thin, uh, a bit on the bright side, lacking a little bit of mids, um, which is quite an opposite uh, effect that you know that I hear from a lot of mixes. But you know, listen, um, I'm guessing that you probably just went through and. Um, it, you know, it could be a combination of things. If this is something you recorded, it might have been tracked that way. Um, and you know, when you're when you're rolling off a lot of bottom end with a high pass filter, um, you know, it's important to kind of know what you need and know what you you don't, right? If that makes sense. So, like with background vocals, if I'm kind of folding them underneath the lead vocal, I know I don't need a whole lot of low end on those backing vocals. But I know I need it on the lead vocal. So maybe I want to take out like everything below 80 hertz, but I don't want to completely get rid of everything on the low end. Um, I just want to get rid of stuff that I know people aren't really going to be able to hear, like 20, 30 on most listening, um, uh, listening devices. 
uh, or stereo systems, that's just not really going to come across. So go back, check out what you did to the bottom end there, and uh, you know just just make sure you got some of that. You know it's sounding natural, but uh, you know you're not making thinning the stuff out so much where it's losing all the body. So but but love the tune. Um, thought it was cool. Some of the I could tell the drums they, they sounded a bit programmed. Uh, there was a fill at the end here that was like a little sloppy. Well, I'm gone. Right there. You know, but uh, but solid, definitely solid and uh, uh, workable. So good job, good job, Cameron Harris. Morning Sun by Wayward Soul, super cool. Love pedal steel. <laughs> Last up, got my man Doug Payne, and he's gonna bring the rock. So let's get this guy going here. And this is called Flames. This is by the band The Black Crown. All right. And uh, this is mixed by Doug Payne. Here we go. Sounds awesome so far. Love, love the way it sounds. Super tight. Um, this is a great example of how it's well balanced where we've got a lot of good bottom and we have a lot of good top, but it doesn't sound overtly muddy and it doesn't sound overtly bright. So that's that's kind of what we're going for with a lot of things. All about balance, like I said before. Um, only thing I'm hearing on the vocal is I feel like there's just a little bit of like 150 or 200 of this vocal that could come out like a DB or two, nice wide cut, uh, would would sort of get rid of a little bit of that. Um, you know, it's hard to say if it's muddy or if it's nasally, but there's just a little bit of bottom on the vocal I would just sort of take out. That could also be the reverb on the return. Uh, make sure you're you're EQing your reverbs and your delays, which is something I say a lot. Um, can often get muddy low end buildup going through effects. So typically, if the reverb I'm using or the delay that I'm using doesn't have a built-in, um, you know, built-in filters or something like that, or a built-in EQ, I will put an EQ after the effect so that. Um, I'm taking out low end on the return verb or the return delay or whatever it is because I don't really need, you know, my reverb tails to have a whole lot of 70 in them. You know what I mean? Or, or you know, um, inversely, I don't need like 20K in my reverb tails either where it's going to maybe brighten up, you know, if you're going against a bright plate or something like that. So just be conscious of your effects and uh, make sure, especially on your vocals, that they're not making your vocals too muddy or they're not making your vocals too bright.
See, right here is one of those spots where the vocal's sounding a little on the muddy, a little on the dark side to me. It's not like a constant thing throughout, but uh, this is definitely one of those parts where it's just just a little bit on the muffly side. Could take out a little bit of, you know, I'm just throwing out some guesses where I'd first look maybe around 200, uh, something like that. Could just, you know, nothing drastic. It doesn't need anything major. It just, a couple, you know, a dB or two, sort of like a... Um, uh, like a mastering EQ move, nothing surgical, crazy, just a little bit of uh, shaving off some bottom. Really good mix. Really, really good mix. Um, the band sounded awesome. Drum sounded huge, fat. Uh, love the reverb you got on the snare. Um, Tom sounded good and big. The bass, the guitars, everything had a spot and was very audible. Um, everything played nice together, which um, you know, which, which is what I go for. Um, you know, good, great mixes have that. And I thought I could hear everything very well. Uh, even the vocals, despite having a few spots of where I thought you could bring out a little bit of um, a little bit of the lows on a couple points, really, really good. Um, nothing drastic, dramatic. Um, going back and reflecting on a couple of those vocal parts, uh, it doesn't even bother me enough where I'm like, "Oh, you got to do that." It's you know, it's it. It, it, it's unavoidable. I'm just thinking that there's a couple parts in there where the the, the lows or the low mids could benefit from just getting uh, just getting cut out in a few spots. But I mean, re it sounded great. I, I really I have nothing uh, you know n nothing to say um, uh, you know in a um, uh, I was gonna say negatively, but I don't say negative things. I say uh, constructive things. So um, yeah, nothing really constructive to say. Uh, I would print it, put it on the record if it's not already on there, and uh, you're good to go, man. Uh, Doug, you kill all these these uh, hard rock, heavy rock, metal tunes. That's your that's your wheelhouse, man. You do a great job with that. So uh, you know, uh, big props on that. Great, great mix. Uh, really good job. So that has been Monday for the. 15th of uh of may today we've had mixes from stuart wallace mixes from michael brown cameron harris doug payne uh the first one we heard was um it was my fault for waiting by atlantis bound second one was jealous by the band connect mixed by michael brown third one was morning sun by wayward soul mixed by cameron harris and then you just heard flames by the black crown mixed by doug payne uh, love the variety in these mixes we had today. So, um, you know, overall guys, really good job. Um, you know, you guys impress me every week and I know I say that all the time, but it's true. So, uh, thank you guys for submitting. Uh, I appreciate it. If, uh, if you guys missed the beginning and you would like to be on a mix critique Monday, please email me Pete at mixbetternow.com. Uh, all the instructions on how to do that. I get a lot of emails saying, how do I submit? And all you got to do is look in the description box. You will see the um, uh, the instructions. All you got to do is email me a wave file. Please email me a wave file, uh, Pete at mixbetternow.com. Please include your name. 
the name of the tune and the name of the band if it is different from yours. And uh, that's it, okay? First come, first serve. I get them, put them in line. And uh, it's that easy, all right? So thank you guys for another uh, another awesome round of mixes. I appreciate it. Um, just want to say thanks again. And, uh, you know, really, really solid job. So uh, as always, thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. Hope you all have an awesome day, and I will catch you next time. All right? See ya.